If I open the drop down menu at the top, you can see a number of options. And I'm going to look at this final one, create and compare your own fractions. It's basically a sort of fraction playground. I'm provided with two fractions here and I'll start by playing around with this one on the left. When you create a fraction there are two key steps. The first is how many slices for the whole circle. This is controlled by the number at the bottom of the fraction and its mathematical name is the denominator. If I click this yellow plus button below the line there are now two slices and you can see that the denominator has increased from 1 to 2. One more click and there are three slices, another click and it's gone up to four. So now the circle has been cut up into quarters. So far I've just sliced up the circle but I haven't selected any of the slices yet. To create a fraction I also need a number bigger than zero at the top. This top number is called the numerator and it tells you how many slices are selected. This time I click the yellow plus button above the line. So there's one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. Let me go through that again and this time try to match up the fraction picture here with how the fraction is written here. I'll reduce the numerator by clicking this minus button above the line. Now it's gone to 2 and then to 1. Now only one of these quarter slices is selected and this fraction is 1 quarter. It's written like this, 1 on top and 4 on the bottom. This is an example of what's called a unit fraction. It's so called because just one slice is selected. And here's another unit fraction. I've sliced the other circle into thirds and selected one of its slices. So this is the unit fraction one third. By the way, you can see just by looking at the two slices that one third is bigger than one quarter. And children sometimes find this confusing since three is smaller than four. Working again with the fraction on the right, I'll choose another denominator and this time I'll choose the denominator 8. And I'll also increase the numerator, that's the number of slices selected, to 2. So that's the fraction 2 eighths. And you can see that these two fractions, 1 quarter and 2 eighths, are exactly the same size. When two fractions are the same size but are composed of different numbers, they're called equivalent fractions. Now I'll try and create another pair of equivalent fractions. Here's two thirds on the left and I'll set the denominator of the fraction on the right to say sixths. I'll keep increasing the numerator until the two fractions look the same. So that's two sixths, three sixths, and four sixths. And indeed, two thirds and four sixths are the same size. So these two fractions are equivalent. But what if I'd used some other denominator here? Perhaps I might have used fifths. Could I have found a fraction based on fifths that's equivalent to two thirds? Well, here goes. Four fifths is clearly bigger than two-thirds. Let me reduce it to three-fifths and you can see that it's a little bit smaller. So in fact I can't do it. And that's the fraction playground.